Hello, in this third part of these tutorials on SCID for the chess student, we'll be looking at how to annotate your games automatically using the engines that we brought in in the second part. We'll also learn how to use a score graph to gain some insights into how the game went and the general trends and mistakes that were made by both players. This score graph is a really great function. It's also in some other programs like those from Chessbase, and it's one that a lot of players aren't really aren't really utilizing. So I really encourage you to try this one out. It's a great way to get a really quick insight into all your games when you don't have time to go fully through each game. So it's real quick. So we have here uh, this game that I played in the fifth round of the Marchand Open and you see here that I don't have any annotations in this game at this particular moment and uh, I've also got here this analysis engine window for Critter that we saw how to open in the second part earlier. Now what I want to do here is use this annotate function here so it's got this little bookmark over this text pad so I want to make sure first of all that I'm at move one in the game, in this case I am, and I'm going to click this annotate here. So you see I get a lot of options here and I actually have to confess there's a little bit of a bug in this latest version that I'm using so that some things are getting cut off at the bottom that probably won't affect you. But you can adjust things like the blunder threshold here. This one is really important. You can adjust the seconds per move. This basically adjusts the thinking time for the engine. The more time you give it, the more deeply it will see into the position, the more it will be able to assess how good a sacrifice is. Uh, it'll have a better idea of what the compensation is or what the positional advantage is. So usually three, five seconds is probably good enough, but if you're doing maybe multiple games or you're in a hurry, you can use less time. Maybe you'll miss a few things though. Uh, you can choose to annotate all moves. I encourage you to do that or to add scores for all moves. You'll need to do that to generate the score graph. You can choose when to add variations. When the engine cites something where it thinks there was a better alternative, you can include that in here. And you can choose which side to annotate. Here again, I'd encourage you to annotate for moves by both sides. So we won't get into all the stuff here, but let's just hit enter and you'll see it takes off. Okay, And I've got a short time uh, set to analyze so you see it's going through this pretty quickly. But we don't want to deal with that right now so I'm going to stop that and I'm just going to go over here where I've already saved an annotated version of this game. And so if we switch back you'll see that I've already got these scores from the engine for all of the moves in the game here up through move 34. And now what I can do is I can go over here to tools and down to score graph here and if I click that you'll see I get this excellent graph over here. So over here on this axis you see that it goes up to 2 which is a 2 pawn advantage for white and then it goes down here to negative 1 which would be a negative 1 pawn advantage for black. So in this case the largest advantage each either side had was a little less than one and a half pawns for white. White had uh, an okay opening. Black may have equalized in this area. Then white got a really large advantage and I was playing white and I felt really good at this point. And then we see here that it pretty much drifted to a quality. Maybe white had some small chances at the end here. So there's a lot of useful things we can get. We've already described the general trend of the game, which is a really, really great insight. I encourage people to pay attention to the trend of the game. And then also right here, we can see where the advantage shifted. And if we click on the graph, we can go immediately to the part in the game that is being shown in the graph. And I can say here that having looked at this game already, that what I missed here was actually one move back here, and I missed mainly this opportunity to take this knight and after black takes with the queen I can play my knight back to block with the check defending the check and the attack on the knight and in this case white has a really large advantage because white's going to play this rook to f1 in a moment 
and I get uh, probably a winning position. So it's clear that this score graph is really, really useful. It's really easy to create and you can use in the options that we looked at. There's an option to batch annotate so that you can run this over all of the games that you have in a database. So if you play in a tournament with seven, eight games, you can run this over all of them, go get a cup of coffee and come back. And then you can pull this up and you automatically have some really great insights and you know at what points you want to look into this game and, and see where you or your opponent may have gone wrong and lost the advantage or lost the chance to grab the advantage.